seems to me that for the better part of 2,000 years, Christianity has been creating these these rituals and these rules. You know, they've erected these elaborate and often expensive cathedrals, and all of that to support a faith that I believe is is ultimately built on sand. And yet, it's all still standing. Yes, because people keep telling each other the same stories over and over again. Just because I write something down and I bury it in the dirt, it doesn't make it true. I think I'm beginning to see the flux of it. Look, I, I understand that a number of people claim to have seen Jesus after his crucifixion, and some of them even wrote it down. But I guess my question is, how, how can we be sure of the reliability of those manuscripts? In the same way we authenticate any historical document, by comparing and contrasting the copies that have been recovered. It's called textual criticism. The more copies we have, the better that we can cross-reference and figure out if what the original was saying is historically accurate. And the earlier they come from the history, the better. Take Homer's Iliad, for example. Is this real? That's as real as the Macedonian dirt that I know you have. Well, the Greeks considered this their Bible for many centuries. Yes, they did. That is one of 1,565 copies in existence today. Now, the Iliad was originally composed 800 years before Christ. This Greek copy is dated at the 3rd century AD. So, so that's, that's 1,100 years between this copy and the original, yes? Correct. It's only one ancient collection of writings that has more authenticated copies than the Iliad. Can you guess what that is? Tell me the Bible. The New Testament. And how many copies is that? To date, archaeologists have recovered 5,843 Greek New Testament manuscripts. That's four times as many as the Iliad. The earliest fragment of the Gospel of John was found in ancient Egypt, and it dates to the 2nd century AD. How close is that to the original? Less than 30 years. I have one of the fragments in my collection. It's quite a treasure, isn't it? Uh -huh. After the New Testament and the Iliad, runners up on it become close. We only have 100 copies of Sophocles, 7 copies of Plato's Tetralogies, and only 5 copies of anything by Aristotle. In fact, if you lay the surviving copies of Aristotle, one on top of the other, it would make barely 4 feet. You do the same surviving copies of the New Testament, the stack would be a mile high. Nothing else in history even comes close. How is that for real life? Father, I certainly appreciate it. You've given me a lot of food for thought. <laughs> Entirely my pleasure. Oh, wow. The Shroud of Turin that is a fantastic reproduction. Uh, the actual shroud you can see the cathedral of St. John the Baptist under lock and key, of course. <laughs> uh, no one's ever proven if the shroud is the actual burial cloth of Christ. But whenever someone looks in those eyes for the first time, the Galilean who hung on the cross two millennia ago suddenly becomes a real person. But why would he do it? Why, why allow himself to be killed if, if he really is the, the son of God? Why not use his power to defend himself? The answer to that is what got me out of the dirt and into the church. It's really very simple. Oh, my God.